Hello everyone and welcome to another Timeless video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Rug Midrange in Timeless format, aka Teamer. So last time I checked out Teamer, um, I was playing with Natural Order, but recently there has been a lot of control decks especially in the Demir color. And I think that might be because there's a lot of show and tells going around right now. So I'm going to be trying out the teamer without having natural order, because if you have natural order against a control deck, it's never going to stick and you have to sacrifice a creature and it's just not a good time. So instead, we're playing good cards. We're playing good cards. And I'm also trying out something a little bit different. I'm playing four copies of Tarmogoyf in this deck with two copies of Hooting Mandrills. So it, this is a little bit of a non-bow with the Hooting Mandrills and Tarmogoyf. But in this format, decks tend to put a lot of cards into the graveyard and that includes our opponent. So we're kind of banking on our opponent putting a lot of cards in the yard. And you might be asking like, why not Uro in this deck instead of Hooting Mandrills? Well, for one, putting mandrels can be 1 mana 4 4 card with trample. But another reason is the fact that we have 3 copies of Blood Moon in the sideboard. Uro is going to be very, very clunky in this deck. Fetching double blue and double forest in the deck is not going to work. So that's why we see 2 copies of putting mandrels instead of Uro in this deck. And honestly, this card is not bad. It's a 1 mana 4 4 trample that doesn't get answered by Fatal Push which is a very popular card that you see in the mirror control. And not to mention, it cannot be chump blocked by Orkish Bowmaster as well. So that's also another plus. And one last thing to mention, this deck is probably going to have some trouble versus Zoo deck because our Unholy Heat is the only card that can answer their giant creatures such as Kavu. And getting the Delirium out especially against the Death Ray Shaman and Kavu exiling our card every single turn, might also be very hard as well. So instead of having more copies of Unholy Heat, we're actually playing two copies of Tashana and two copies of Stifle. So early turns, you Stifle your opponent's lands, and once they get the Kavu down, if you don't know about this interaction, if opponent attacks with the Kavu, their ability triggers forcefully and then Tishana Tidebinder comes in and then neutering the Kavu into a 0-0 creature after countering the ability. So that's why we see two copies of Tishana's Tidebinder here. So yeah, that's the deck. Very light on counter spells and rather a bunch of planeswalkers and creatures. So I'm excited to try this deck out and having said that, I'm going to be hopping over to some Timeless Best of 3 to show you guys how the deck does. So let's hop on over. Hmm. Besides the spell pierce, I don't like anything about this hand in particular. I guess I do like Oko. Oh god. Hmm. Think I'm willing to crack this thing and then brainstorm now. That is really, really bad. Why Ley Lines? What kind of deck is this? What? But you're... You got rid of your own creatures. I think I have to leave up a spell pierce. I don't... Yeah. I don't think I can brainstorm. Okay, so... My opponent's... A Blood Moon player. Well, I mean, if they want a Blood Moon again, uh, fine by me. Go! 
Maybe it's like a prison bag. Well, you're attacking me. So this is not a bolt. I'm actually kind of curious what happens if I do this. Surely you see the humor. Oh, it's still a legendary. So it won't make another boo. Okay, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I guess you can have a stifle? Okay, we know what they're playing now. A Blood Moon player! Okay, so we have to be very careful in fetching our cards. Cloth is in. I think this might actually just kill them on its own, if we have it. Uh, let's go down on Fable. Might be it, honestly. Yeah. The Hu Ting Mandrels. The Hu Ting Mandrels. It sucks that we have to fetch a forest with this, though. But I guess we have to because they also show that they played, um,. A dark ritual, right? So they could dark ritual into a blood moon. No way. How did you expect the hooting mandrels? No way. How do they do that? The magic that dances around you. Surely you must be famished. Oko can't exchange a, uh, with the artifact, right? Exchange control of a target artifact or creature you control. With the creature an opponent controls with power 3 or less, so... Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, my Tarmogoyf is very small. I think the play actually might be ah, actually this is probably Orcish Bowmas, right? Um Get rid of the unlicensed hearse, maybe? And brainstorm. I was also thinking about um, getting the Giganta out into my hand for a potential Blood Moon. Passes the turn. I'm gonna get rid of the Unlicensed Hearse. It is very annoying for my Tarmogoyf and Hooting Mandrels. Hmm. 
Let's grab another commercial district. I basically, I, I can't play this bra um, brainstorm at all because uh, my opponent has a bunch of Orcish Bowmasters. Maybe I should have attacked first and then see what they did. Hey, look, our Tarmogoyf is already a 4 5. Pretty insane. So concerned. Wait, are they going to creativity me? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Because we have Oko. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't matter. Oh god. Nope. I should have realized it was a sneak attack deck. Wait, I swear I had my pitting needles in the sideboard. Where, where What happened to our pitting needles? Uh... Okay, we have to add two Pitting Needles. Okay. Good enough. Uh, opponent, I need you to fetch a land for me. Yes, like that. Just like that. I could also Brainstorm. Maybe I should have Brainstormed. Hmm... I don't know. Ritual into Necropotence, okay. It's a little bit scary. What kind of deck are they playing? I'm kind of guessing Vampire. Right? There's a very good chance it's a vampire deck. I will invert the world so I expect like a Soren to come down next turn. If they do Soren next turn, we can get rid of it. the Vein Ripper that is, by sacrificing the Death Ray Shaman. So Ritual. In to draw some more. In to Beseech. Okay, so... It's more of a combo deck than I thought. Hmm. Hitting needle. Yeah, I mean that that was pretty cute. That was pretty cute. Another Oko. This will not deter me. They're playing a pretty interesting deck. It seems like it's just a mono black. That's playing Besiege the Mirror. And Necropotence has like um, a way to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, my hand is pretty bad. Considering that they took, a, took away a Brainstorm, maybe they don't have an Orcish Bowmaster in their hand. That's a big possibility. Liliana? I'll have this fight finished before brunch. So they're gonna minus. Oh, one of your friends has to leave. Um Oh 
A plus. I want to keep this for potential Minx Gambu, right? The Hooting Mandrels. The Hooting Mandrels. Honestly, do I really care if they plus with Liliana? I don't think I do. Efforts are futile. <laughs> the Hu Ting Mandrels. Oh, I didn't. I I thought I had to excel all five of them. Guess it doesn't matter. You won't be outsmarting me. I like the fact that this has a uh, trample, by the way. The one ring, okay. It's a little bit annoying. Um, attack, attack. Take one damage. Two damage, if they crack that. Fables online. Just do this. I, have let my friends down. I, knew this was a waste I think of time. even if a shield comes down next turn, they lose the game because of Kiki Jiki. A yeah, very interesting deck that plays a uh, one ring and necropones together. I don't hate it because they're they're using they're using um beseech the mirror to like kind of have a wishboard with Karn. Like it's pretty cool. Okay, so got to see a little bit of uh Hooting Mandrel's action. We want some pipping needles. Do we want Veil of Summer? Probably. What does Liliana say? Each player. So even if I develop Summer, it doesn't do anything. I might even cut two Brainstorms. Um, and I think I'm going to cut Fable. I think we like Tishana, right? In this matchup, because they play a lot of Planeswalkers. If they're playing Liliana, Karn, they're also playing like Ashok in the sideboard. Stifle, we could probably see this going away. Uh, we might want a Clothus and a copy of a Fable Bag. A lot of options. Fatal Push, yep. Pithing Needle. What do I do with this Pithing Needle? Hmm. I guess next turn is Necropotence, so I should probably Pithing Needle first. And we'll call Necropotence. I'll leave up a Lightning Bolt. It's a little unfortunate that we had to crack the Wooded Foothill just to be able to play a Pithing Nil. So now like our Lightning Bolt is the most obvious Lightning Bolt ever seen. What? I did not expect that. In the slightest? Yeah, I did not expect that in the slightest. A Blood Moon. I don't know. I think you got you gotta get rid of a Deathrite Shaman here. 
Oh no. No opponent. That's why that's why when I whenever I play Shoulders Edict, I always read that card like three times over. <laughs> Giganta. Giganta's so good, like Opponent's playing Giganta, I'm playing Giganta. Okay, so this is... Definitely Zoo. Just gonna get rid of this now. And we'll have a Halfling into a Spell Pierce. Halfling into a Spell Pierce. Always scary going second against a zoo deck. Right? I just... Ah! Oh, what a punt. That is a gigantic, ginormous punt. You don't want to do that. Like, I don't know why I decided to play the forest there. I'm like, oh, look, a land where I don't have to take damage. Miss. So lucky. Yeah, I would have just... I mean, this is on me, right? I lost this game. Yep, that was all on me. That was all on me. I think that's it though. I think we go with this. Just sideboard out some Fables for Blood Moon. I mean, Blood Moon, uh, Fable is so good in this with the Blood Moon though. Maybe it's Oko. Is it Oko? Maybe get rid of some Okos? Maybe I'm thinking like something like that. Get rid of some Spell Pierces. The reason why I like uh, the Fable in this matchup with the Blood Moon is sometimes you can't fetch everything that you need. Another hand where I can't I can't get my mana dorks. Where are my mana dorks? It's actually insane. Hmm. Okay. Tishana. I think I actually want to keep that. Because this can get rid of a Kavu. No brainstorm. Land perfect. What I was looking for was a blue fetch land or a blood moon. Wow, a lot of um what is this? A lot of interaction spells. Well, you're fetching now. Why would you want to fetch now? How come my opponent wants to fetch now? Uh, Hooting Mandrels. Hooting Mandrels. This is still a 2-3? What a scam. I could just play Oko. The binding is currently at 2 mana though. Binding's currently at 2 mana.
Man, what's happening? So now this is a 3-4. I guess I can leave up a stifle like this. They need a blue source, right? Right now they don't have a blue source. Oh no. That was the only sorcery left. Okay, so... Let's go, Oko. Plus on this. And I play the Hooting Mandrels. Okay, that was a game. Stifle's really good in this matchup. Because essentially, like a Stifle is basically a one for one versus a Leyline Binding, which is insane. Now, how do I win going second? <laughs> How do I win going second? We need to find these ASAP going second. It's a bit slow, but I'll take it. I mean, don't get me wrong, like it's not slow, slow. Like we can curve into Fable, but what I mean by slow is like we don't have any interaction spells. Wow. They mold to four. Uh, okay. I mean, very unfortunate. But I mean, I mean, they, they might still have a pretty strong hand nonetheless, like if they go Kavu here, like. And they miss with Breakout? I mean, okay, I'll be honest. I have been missing with the Breakout a lot as well in a zoo deck. So I, I don't know how they built the deck. But depending on how they built the deck, they might run into some issues with the uh, breakout. The is the air Wait, is sweet. did you see that? A, like a hamster came out. That's a new animation, right? I could keep this if I really want to stifle, but it is just so risky. It's just so risky, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh no. I have to grab a forest. This could be a Blood Moon deck. That sucks. They didn't play it. That's insane. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fetch. I'm gonna do something here. Nice. That's really good. Oh, I, I got my fix. I got my stifle fix. That is some good stuff. That is some good stuff. Another one. I could just run out hooting mandrels, leave up a stifle. Should I do that? And this way with the, um, the last fetch land, we can surveil. Come on, one more fetch land. Can you play one more fetch land? Please. Faithless looting? And this economy? I mean, I, I respect that. I mean, just the other day, I was playing an affinity card that draws two cars, and it's just a 2 2 body that gets hit by the Orcish Bowmaster, so. A Croxa? Into an Epicure. Very interesting deck. I guess it's, um, a bolt. A Soren? Out of nowhere. To fight with an ancient vampire lord. Foolish. You may sacrifice? Okay, let's stifle this. Okay, well, uh, we know for sure this Crocs is not coming out for eternity. Also, we know what opponent's playing now. A Bolt? Might actually want that. Yeah, I might actually want that. Or should I Tishana's Tidebinder? We might actually have been able to go face. Right? Okay, so upon drew a bolt. Very interesting. They drew a bolt. Um I don't think I can attack with this. Because I, I need to go what it put hill because I don't I don't play um I don't play a a mountain. I have to go Fable, in case this is a Bolt. A face. You went face. Hmm. Another Fable? I'm looking for Oko.
Um, I think I have to leave the Hooting Mandrels back. In case it's another bolt. It seems like it's another... Bolt. Perhaps. Okay, so four damage hitting for sure. They have to block the Tarmogoyf. I think we won. Okay, so check this out. Okay, this must be a bolt then. Okay, look look at our boar state. Look at the the cards. It's just random cards, I swear. Like you have a hooding mandrels, Tishana, a goblin shaman, and a tarmogoyf and a kikijiki. Like just random cards. Okay, petting needle. Maybe a veil of summer. I don't think my opponent plays a necropones. There's no way with this mana base. They're going to be taking too much damage. Maybe go down on a copy of a Fable. Maybe two Fables. Maybe Oko. Let's try that. Okay, so we got Tishana into... Okay, we got a Shaman into Tishana. Which is really good. Maybe I should have gone Wooded Foothill into uh, fetching a forest. There's a good chance they also play um a Blood Moon. Blood Ghast. A Blood Ghast. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Our Tishana's Tidebinder is a little bit slow compared to their Soren. Okay, so no Sorens. Also, I'm gonna fetch a forest. What are you doing? No! Don't fetch her! What are you doing? Hmm... Oko okay, now? Oko okay, now! I think I'll refrain from doing that. Dark Ritual. Soren. If you threaten Innistra, I will take it personally. Why are you plussing? Why are you plussing, my man? But they have a Bowmaster in their hand. Yeah, they have exactly Bowmaster in their hand. Nice, another Stifle. No! Okay, well, looks like opponents get opponent gets a turn with the Soren if they can get rid of the Tishana here. Welcome to the feast. We don't attack, obviously, because of Bubble Master. 
They attack face? Okay. Oh dear. I'm gonna put three damage onto uh, Soren here. You fatal push that. Let's actually play Deathrite Shaman. Let's just play a Fable as well. And hope that nothing too crazy happens. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's what they were planning. I see, I see. But we do have a, an Oko, so it's all good. Make that into a 3-3, and we'll play a Tarmogoyf. Um, let's just kill it. Should I kill it? Or should I kill this? I guess it doesn't hurt to wait. Okay, we got a Fable. Oh, I'll see, I'm not... I don't think I'm too scared about Soren. Uh, another Vein Ripper coming down. Like, they'd have to beat our Oko somehow. And even if a Vayne Ripper comes down, like, I don't think... I don't really think it does anything. Yeah, I don't think it does anything. Unless they can get rid of our Oko. It's just gonna get Elked. I can't block because Vayne Ripper gonna deal more damage. That's five damage. Your life blood is sweeter than mine. That's not lethal. Um nom 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 nom. One bite, yep. And all your cares are gone. If I had blocked the Orcish Bowmaster, we would have actually lost. Right? We would have taken two damage. That would have exactly put me to zero. Okay, so the rug mid-range. It did pretty well. We played seven games, I 
think no, we played six games. Uh, we went five and one. Um, I lost only to a zoo deck. Just had absolutely everything. We played against two zoo decks, and the zoo matchups definitely can seem a little bit hard if you don't draw your stifles early and your Tishana's Tidebinder. So the reason why Tishana's Tidebinder is in the deck is actually because of zoo decks. So as you can see, um, if you're in team or color, Lightning Bolt doesn't answer Kavu. Unholy Heat might have some, you might have some trouble getting to six damage, especially Kavu being able to exile a card as well. And some zoo decks also play Deathrite Shamans. Unholy Heat, not as good in this format because the Deathrite Shaman can just um, always turn off the Unholy Heat. So that's why we only play two copies. The fact that we can't really reliably have an Unholy Heat in this deck at six damage, that's why we have two copies of Tishana's Tidebinder to stop the Kavu. Um, otherwise, we have some Hooting Mandrels, Tarmogoyf to also block their big creatures. Honestly, Tarmogoyf, I had some doubts um, whether or not the Hooting Mandrels would turn off Tarmogoyf too much. But from my experience, not so much to actually care. So honestly, a pretty insane card. <laughs> it doesn't get answered by Fatal Push, which is a bonus. But it also has Trample. So like Orcish Bowmasters can't really chump block this, which is another plus as well. Also love the Stifle versus Zoo deck as well. And Oko being Oko, Minx and Boo being Minx and Boo. Honestly, just um, really just, you know, a good cards dot deck. It is actually just a good cards dot deck. It, it is kind of comical, like when you have a board like Tarmogoy, Hooting Mandrels, and Tishana on the battlefield. Like, they all do different things. It's like, it's not really synergetic at all. Like, they're just good creatures. Yeah, um, because we don't play with our graveyard too much, um, Hooting Mandrels is actually was our card of choice. You could play Uro, but what I've noticed um, after playing the Natural Order version with uh, with some Uros in the deck is that the deck gets hit by the Blood Moon too much. So as you have noticed, we are playing Giganta, so there's no double color cores in the deck. So our priority with the fetch lands usually just go with... Um, Forest is the most important card to grab. So that's something that I've realized after playing against um, one of the zoo decks. I Blood Moon early thinking that uh, I'd be fine and then just play the Giganta later and then be able to play the green mana. But they had double bolt. So that actually lost us the game even though we Blood Mooned and stopped most of, uh, most of their cards. So green is the most important card to fetch. That's why we see a lot of green fetch lands. Because um, if you get the green down, you get uh, Deathrite Shaman, Delighted Halfling, and Minsk and Boo. Basically, you can play everything, right? Except for these cards. Even if you don't get the blue source, like if you can play the left side, you can win the game. So that's why um, you see more green fetch lands instead of the blue fetch lands. So be mindful of uh, what you fetch. Definitely get the forest first. That's probably going to be your priority. But yeah, uh, Tarbogoyf actually really good in this format. Very good in this format. Gets big very fast. Um, we play a lot of different permanents. Planeswalkers, instant speeds, um, lands, creatures, enchantments, right? The Tarbogoyf is going to be a 5-6, right? That's It's going to be able to do a lot of work. Um, as for the sideboard, um, for some reason, uh, I thought the Pithing Needles were in the deck at the start. So apologies for the early games. The Pitting Needle was not in the sideboard when I was sideboarding. Sideboarding is actually pretty easy. Bell of Summer versus Black decks. Um, heavy counter spell like the Mirror Control. Rolling Vortex against against Omnitel. Pitting Needle versus Necropotence or Planeswalker decks like Vampire Soren deck that you've seen. Or something like Yagamoth. Uh, there's also two copies of Test of Talents also versus some Control decks. You can also use this against Omnitel as well. And we have uh, Blood Moon versus Field of the Dead, plus Zoo deck as well. And Cloth this, honestly, you can just play this, bring this anytime you want. If opponent is abusing the graveyard too much, just have it in and it'll just uh, win the game on its own. Especially good against um, the Mirror Control. So like, think about Delighted Halfling, unanswered Delighted Halfling into Cloth this, right? They can't counter this and now for the rest of the game, they have to deal with the Cloth this 
dealing two damage every single turn and you gain two life. So yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. Um, I think I misplayed once. I have I've been misplaying a lot recently. Um, but this session I think I misplayed only once, which is a <laughs> which is a good accomplishment on my part, I think. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video so far, and if you did. As always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.